Throughout the novel, F. Scott Fitzgerald has presented a mastery of both symbolism and motifs. This becomes most evident considering the boundless symbols and motifs he employs and develops, such as eyes, parties, colors, and the American dream. The eyes of Dr. T.J. Elgerberg are of particular importance and extensively symbolic throughout the novel. Fitzgerald uses the eyes of Dr. T.J. Elgerberg to create relative parallels of symbolic importance with the eyes of other characters as well. He employs the motifs of eyes to criticize American society in the 1920s. Dr. T.J. Elkerberg's eyes are described as blue and gigantic. The retinas are one yard high. The look out of no face but instead from a pair of enormous yellow spectacles which pass over a non-existent nose. His eyes, dimmed a little by many painless days under sun and rain, brood on over the solemn dumping ground. Upon first description, Fitzgerald depicts the eyes as faded, disappointed, sad, and overseeing. We later learn that they look into and over the Valley of Ashes, the place where those who fail to achieve the American dream, with little to start with, end up at. Already, Fitzgerald creates a feeling as if the eyes represent God. The usage of the word brood in the <laughs> implies that the owner of the eyes is rather unhappy with what he is watching. The eyes create an idea of a godly being watching over society. They seem disgusted with society of the 1920s, the moral decay and the social decadence that so characterizes the era. Furthermore, the eyes expressively show disappointment in the American dream, which causes people to fail and ruin their lives out of their own self-ambition, which is essentially another component of the era of decadence. One of the most significant passages regarding the eyes of T.J. Uckerberg in this novel occurs after Mr. Wilson realizes that Myrtle was cheating on him. I spoke to her, he muttered. After a long silence, I told her she might fool me, but she couldn't fool God. I took her to the window. With an effort, he got up and walked to the rear window and leaned his face, pressed against it. And I said, God knows what you've been doing, everything you've been doing. You may fool me, but you can't fool God. At this point, Michaelis, who was standing behind him, was looking at the eyes of Dr. T.J. Uggerberg, which had just revealed themselves to the night pale and enormous. In this situation, it can be seen as though the eyes were watching over, with disappointment, the entire moral deterioration and scandalous behavior of Myrtle, which was so characteristic of the 1920s. This passage firmly, and in a non-abstract manner, establishes the eyes of Dr. T.J. Elgerberg as God's eyes. The idea of she couldn't fool God emphasizes that she couldn't fool God, that she was achieving the American dream, which she never was, and in part was just another component of the moral decadence of the 1920s. Nick's eyes are continuously mentioned in the narration, in which he discusses things through eyes. For example, after Gatsby's death, the east was haunted for me like that, distorted beyond my eyes, power of correction. This last quote shows how Fitzgerald often uses through Nick's eyes to point out a flaw with society which he himself sees. In this instant, Nick shows that his image of the east has seen the impossibility of the American dream, which destroys so many superficially people of the 1920s. Furthermore, Nick tries or wants to run away from the destructive forces of the American dream in stating he wants to leave, but alas, that is where the reader finds Nick lacks that epiphany, that consuming, damaging drive to achieve the American dream is everywhere around him, no matter where he goes, and he feeds off the shallowness and decadence of the society of the 1920s. Fitzgerald uses the motif of eyes to develop his theme of the costing impossibility of achieving the American dream, which he preys infinitely upon the shallowness and decadence of 1920s society. He does so through the repetition of, D of Dr. T.J. Uckelberg's eyes throughout the novel, which represent God looking down disappointedly upon American society, as well as through the insights of Nick, which directly conveys Fitzgerald's personal criticism of the 1920s. Eyes are an outstanding example of Fitzgerald's mastery of motifs and symbolism, and one of many which he uses to develop the theme of the factious nature of the American dream, which so he inversionally is ruinous. F. Scott Fitzgerald presents a world of partial knowledge, a blinkered vision limited by point of view. Nick Carraway is presenting Gatsby's story as he saw it, but he knows there are other versions which might be told from other points of view. He declares that, Life is much more successfully looked at from a single window after all. 
It might be argued that singularity of vision is one of Gatsby's special qualities, but his vision is ultimately of a world beyond the material world that surrounds him, and in consequence he often seems to be blind to the actual nature of things. The visitor to Gatsby's party who wears owl-eyed spectacles as Nick Season describes them has the appearance of wisdom conventionally associated with the owl. His spectacles make him look scholarly, but the limits to his vision are very clear, and they are not just the consequence of drunkenness. He is impressed by the fact that Gatsby's library contains some real books, but he is not interested in the contents of the books, nor is he interested in the single-minded vision that has driven Gatsby to use such props. Owl Eyes is content to be impressed by the man's stage management. He's one of the few mourners who attends Gatsby's funeral, but he does not really mourn. Instead, he judges Gatsby to have been a poor son of a bitch. He can only see the mundane reality, not the ideal which gave meaning to Gatsby's life. For him, Gatsby was not tragic, but just a pathetic obsessive. Following Gatsby's death, Nick tells us that he found the East Coast distorted beyond my eyes. Power of correction. Without Gatsby... All seems grotesque to him. It is possible that as a reader, we may wish to agree with the owl-eyed man, rather than accept Nick's elevated depiction of his hero. But we are left with the image at the end of the novel of the enchanted vision that met the eyes of the Dutch sailors arriving into the new world, and that is more difficult to dismiss. It returns us to Gatsby as an embodiment of the hope that such vision might show redeem the world from brutality and indifference, which is the American dream.